All right, so we're back. Another video. I think this is part four already. Uh, so yeah, I'm building a 3D printed robotic arm. And I mean, it's going pretty well, if I do say so myself. I mean, it's moving. So that's pretty big. Um, but today we're, ga we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, because what's the point of having a robotic arm if you cannot pick stuff up and put stuff back down again? So today we're going to be making some grippers, right? <clears throat> So you guys today, you're really lucky, right? Because I have taken the liberty to design and 3D print all of the components, all right? So, you know, you don't have to spend hours staring at a uh, computer screen trying to get everything to work. Uh, and still getting it wrong, by the way, this isn't perfect, but uh, I, think, I think we're fine, I think we'll be fine. So yeah, let's just get started with the build. Oh yeah, um, this is uh, what's going to be powering uh, the, the gripper. It's a uh, servo motor. And there's this whole debate in the robotics community whether you should go uh, electric or pneumatic for grippers. Uh, I decided to go electric. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of like pros and cons with pneumatic versus electric, blah, blah, blah. The main reason I decided to go electric is simplicity, basically. Because um, I've already got electric, uh, you know, uh, electricity hooked up to my robot. So this is very simple. You can just, you know, plug it straight in to the uh, CNC shield and it starts working. If I'd had to, you know, use pneumatics, I'd had to wire up uh, pneumatic hoses, uh, solenoid valves, uh, new controls, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to do that. So I just went this route. So, yeah, uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, this is the base. Oh, oh yeah, again, everything is optimized uh, for 3D printing. So all of these designs are very easily 3D printed. Uh, I'm using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The main reason is why I don't use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is just speed. Uh, 0.8 millimeter nozzle is just way faster. Uh, the problem is uh, you get these lines, right? It's not as accurate as a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, uh, but it's just so much faster. That's uh, the main reason I use it. Also, the parts are a little bit stronger because the, the, the lines are thicker, but uh, yeah, for these non-critical parts, having them a bit, you know, wavy like this is absolutely fine. So let's get started with building the frame first. That's this component, and this component is gonna house the uh, servo motor. It's gonna go in right there, so let's get started on that. So yeah, now this uh, main component is done. So we'll put this uh, away for now. And I'm gonna start working on the bearing blocks. So these will need to house a linear bearing, but I have a bit of trouble to get these to fit. So I'm gonna bore them out and then we'll press those in there. So now these are bored out. I hope that they fit a little bit better. Um, I mean, these linear bearings are meant to be press fit, so they have to be a bit tight, but they were a little bit too tight. So um, yeah, let's just see if we can get this in here a little bit started. Oh yeah, that's much easier. Okay, so now that we have two uh, bearing blocks, uh, I'm gonna cut this piece of brass tube to size to fit into the linear bearings. And I'm also gonna polish it up a little bit because it's kind of a bit dirty right now. Uh, polishing up brass is super satisfying. Just get a bit of uh, WD-40, spray it on some high grit sandpaper and uh, Put the entire tube into a drill bit and it just cleans right up and gets really shiny.
and then when you're done something like this and as you can see it's really nice and shiny right now unfortunately that only lasts a little while it's already getting a bit dirty but yeah let's just put these into the blocks you have to be a bit delicate because there are little ball bearings inside of these and if you push too hard uh, they are going to fall out all right now let's put this thing into this thing Okay, so the base is done and I mean, it's feeling really solid. Uh, the linear bearings are moving nice and smoothly on the linear rails. Uh, so yeah, now the next step is to add the grippers to uh, the mechanism. So yeah, let's do that. And we're done. Uh, the last thing I did was add these little bars right here, these 3D printed bars. I forgot to print those in the beginning for whatever reason, so I had to undo these bolts and then bolt it back on. So, But it's fine, honestly, it was pretty simple. Uh, and yeah, I'm really pleased with the results. Uh, this thing feels really solid. Like the mechanism works nicely. The movement is very smooth. And yeah, it, it, it just feels really solid. Like these linear bearings, like they're not moving in any other direction other than these, the, the linear direction. So that's awesome. Uh, also, it has a surprising amount of grip strength. So when it grips something, it's not letting go. And that's awesome, especially when these grippers are, uh, these jaws are smooth, there's no ridges here. So it shouldn't be that grippy, but it has a ton of strength and it just holds on really well. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, also, uh, for the next video, I'm really excited for the next video. I'm going to be trying out some flexible grippers for this thing. As you can see, I designed these jaws to be easily interchangeable, so you can just unscrew them uh, and then change them out. For the next video, PCBWay is going to be manufacturing some flexible grippers for me. Really excited about that because their manufacturing quality is going to be way better than I could ever achieve in my garage right here. So I'm really looking forward to test those out. So make sure to subscribe for that video, leave a like, and thanks for watching. See you next time.